We're rolling. All right. So this is new. Yeah, it's the first one, isn't it? It's the first video podcast. And you got me on it. And you dodged me. Yeah, you dodged me for like a year. <laughs> for a- I never dodged you. <laughs> no, um, but it's cool. Um, one, you know, it's a new avenue. We used to try the podcast, but then getting to put it on YouTube, that'd be pretty fun. Um, but I've been wanting to get you on here for a while. Sit down now. You know, like, I think your ratings are going to go through the roof after this uh, <laughs> broadcast. <laughs> I don't doubt it. Um, so, obviously, I told you before we did this, the main reason I wanted to bring you on here was to talk about uh, mainly like deer, rifle hunting deer, because uh, one thing we always open the door to for people here is uh, we always say send in any questions you got via yeah. on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, and we always get just a ton of gun questions. And absolutely going to get into that. But another thing that we always do on here is – kind of update people on what has been going on at Cottonmouth. Correct. And one thing that we have not covered yet is anyone that listens to this podcast, I promise you has heard us talk about Rocker because we talked about him. I don't know. You know how we were, how we are oh, right yeah. here. He's, he's, a, he's a buck we've been hunting for three years. He was the story of the farm for yeah. a long, long time. A, you know, he, he became a, a, a obsession almost. Yeah. And he, he was almost like a, Sometimes, like, you, we'd go out there, like, okay, he's out there somewhere, but we never saw him. Yeah. And, you know, it was like he was just a, a ghost almost. Well, we'd get, uh, uh, you know, trail camera pictures of him. Mm-hmm. But usually they were at nighttime. Uh, yeah. He was uh, really a smart buck. We started hunting him when he was, we think, four years old. Yeah. And he was a, a good 10-point. Yeah. And he got s- smarter. You know, Brad was hunting him a lot. Will hunted him some. I hunted him some. Mm-hmm. We all hunted him some. Yeah. And, um, but we finally connected on him, yeah. uh, this year, about yeah. a week ago. There had only been two people that saw him on hoof. Yeah. What, well, if you count, you know, you, Troy was with you when you saw him. Yeah. In the Arkansas field. That was two years ago. Yeah. And, and, uh, Troy and I were hunting in the Arkansas field and it just killed a big wide eight point. And we look over to the other side of the field and there's Rocker standing about 150 yeah. yards away. With some does and uh, oh, it, I put I put my rifle up just to look at him through the scope and yeah. oh, it was it was <laughs> that was pro- probably that it, it, that year he was really close to his peak I think yeah I would agree he he definitely because I mean talking about just antler score wise he definitely had gone down yeah but still I mean still, looking at the they finally pulled the, the we pulled the jawbone out of him he's got to be six or seven yeah. Yeah, he was uh, – He was for some reason, you know, his antlers, they, they should have peaked about then. But for some yeah. reason, he was at probably at his best when he was a five-year-old. Yeah, four or five. And I don't I don't know why, but he was still yeah. a beautiful, impressive yeah. buck. So. And we had all that story with him. Yeah. But, but, yeah, you saw him that one time, and then I was filming Brad one time. Uh, we were bow hunting at the, in the secret bottom where he lived, and that's the, that's the only two times he'd been seen – on the hoof yeah. really uh-huh. and um but yeah and so we put the the secret pl- pl- the, the the secret patch which has been historically one of your favorite places to hunt uh, yeah it's, it's always been my favorite place ever since we've been hunting here at cotton mouth yeah but this year we did something different we always planted like in wheat and oats mm-hmm. like everybody else uses yeah but this week you and jordan came in here what in september Right before we left for or August, even yeah, before we left for elk season. That was I would love to take credit for that. I would, but uh, I was here the year before the first year we did it. But that was uh, I had, we didn't get the rain right for us to plant, and I was in Colorado. So yeah. that that all credit of that goes to Jordan and Ben. I think was down here. Yeah. But well, I should have known you didn't have anything because it, <laughs> it turned out real good. But anyway, <laughs> planting that that fall blend that we've got now mm-hmm. with the with the turnips and the. And the radishes in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, we knew where Rocker lived. He lived in the secret bottom. Yeah. And never left. Never left. And yeah. he really never left about a quarter mile radius of where he mm-hmm. lived. Uh, and the whole time we hunted him, or, you know, because we get tra- trail camera pictures of yeah. him. But y'all planted that in that in that new product of ours, mm-hmm. and it just turned out so well. I mean, the, you know, it's, it's knee deep now in, yeah. in the great big turnips, and he loved it. Yeah, and the, the smell in that field you can smell mm-hmm. the the plants in there the turnips especially and it was just so strong and it it and it, it, it was right next to his bedroom probably yeah. two or three hundred yards at the most from where he yep. lived where he bedded 
and he was coming into that field every day at uh, about 4.30 in the afternoon. Yeah. And we never, ever got a pattern on him like that. No. Ever. ever. No. We, if Brad and I hunted him the week before you killed him, but it was bow season then, yeah. and we saw him, but he was like 70 yards, you know, and we were in, we were in tree stand. And I, like, I can, that's, I'm very lucky for the footage purposes of that deer that for the first, like, 20 seconds, I could see him with my eyes, but for the camera, he was behind the limb because <laughs> I'd looked at that deer for pictures for so long when Brad yeah. goes, I said, is that? Brad goes, that's him. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, and, uh, but, you know, I was just so happy to see him. And then the next week, uh, y'all went in there, put that blind up, and Jordan sent me a clip of the footage. And he's tearing those brassicas up out of the ground. He's just tearing them up by the by the stems, big, huge green stems with a big turnip on the end, shaking the dirt off of them. Yeah, tw- you know, cleaning them yeah. and then eating them like a spaghetti noodle. It was mm. it's unbelievable. unbelievable. That's such a cool. And I mean, it's it, I'm, I won't lie. Like the first time coming back, it was a little weird. It was almost it was almost there was a little bit remorseful knowing I was like Rocker's not here. Oh, I know exactly what yeah. you're talking about. Because after I pulled the trigger on him and he dropped, you know, and it was just so many emotions coming through. It's almost like I had shot somebody I knew, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it it, it, it's, it was just, I, I don't know. I've never felt that way mm-hmm. uh, before, but it was almost a little sad. I get it. And, uh, and uh, but we're having him mounted. Yeah. And we're going to put him over our fireplace here at Cottonmouth. So he'll be with us yeah. for for a long time. And we ate some of his back straps at supper last, last night. Last night, yeah, he was delicious. <laughs> yeah, he was really good. Yeah, yeah. But that was cool. It's, yeah, I, I, I had to, we had to get on the rocker story before we got into anything else. And it's you know, just, I, people gonna ask, what does he score? And you know, you and I, we hate scoring deer. Yeah, I really. Uh, do. I mean, we get some beautiful deer. Troy killed a beautiful eight point last night. And we're thinking, what is he, 145, 155, you know, and you put that tape on there and it, and it kind of ruins it. I'd like to just say he's a, you know, he's a, Rocker's definitely in the 160s. I don't think he's a 170, mm-hmm. but he's just a perfect 10 point, not beautiful rack. Uh, and uh, just, it weighed 240 something pounds. Big. Because he's yeah. full of turnips. Yeah. <laughs> he loved the yeah. turnips. And it's just at that point, and we talked about that. I mean, I, I don't mind, you know, I, I don't think it takes away, you know, just because of how much we follow that deer saying, you know, he he was bigger here and bigger there. But I know you didn't care. Any of us didn't care. We, you know, it didn't bother us that he was smaller, you know. No. He was just, it was all part of it. Yeah. Just part of the story. And we had so, so much history with that deer. Well, there's never been a deer since we've been on cottonmouth hunting that we fought, that we hunted that hard. Sometimes it's more about outsmarting a deer. When you hunt one particular deer mm-hmm. and he gets, you know, gets some age on him and everything, it's, sometimes it's just more like a battle of the wits, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's probably why you don't, you come up short a little bit every once in a while. That's probably so. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, and, and part of it is, uh, Somebody said that, man, y'all finally figured Rocker out. I said, no, I honestly, I don't think we figured him out. I think we got we got him to make a mistake. I'll never understand a deer like that fully. Or, or just got real lucky. Got real, I'll, I'll take luck any day. Yeah, because a deer like that and how long has he lived on that farm and doing what he did, I think we just finally caught him slipping. I, I don't think we but, figured him but out. But the good news is we think we got some of his sons and yeah. still walking around this place and they're – yeah, huge. They had plenty of time. Like yes, I said, sir. six or seven year old deer. But um, so let's get into the gun stuff. All right, let's get into that. I know that's your your area of expertise. That I mean, I love guns. Whenever I need like a scope mounted, I know I'd probably screw it up. So I said, I'll just take it to Jimmy. You know, I I like I like I like bow hunting. I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. But I'm the kind of guy I get frustrated when I see a good deer, and he's out of bow range. Right. And uh, now, you know, I'm using a crossbow some. Mm-hmm. I really have enjoyed that. Yeah. Uh, and crossbows are really growing in popularity yeah, now. They are. They make mission, the one I'm using, that sub one, is awesome. It's almost like shooting a gun with a scope and crosshairs. And the trigger on that thing. Oh, yeah. It's about a three-pound trigger, just yeah. like one of my hunting rifles. So. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but guns is you no know, doubt that's my, that's my favorite. Right. And I always knew that about you. And, I mean, I remember uh, the first – like where were we? We were elk hunting. It was that elk hunt we did with Nugent. Oh he yeah, shot that Ted. Bull. He shot Uncle that. Ted. He shot that bull at like how far was he? I think it was about three hundred forty yards. Yeah. down in a valley across a creek. And, and you made a shot that only somebody that spent a lot of time shooting could make. 
Because yeah. I remember we were gutting that bull. We pulled the heart out, and that bullet hole was right through that heart. And I yeah. said, good gracious. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I maybe could have killed that bull, but I couldn't have made a shot like that. Well, I've been I've been lucky through the years. So. Yeah. And I, I do. I shoot a lot. And that's that's really the key to to being successful gun hunting. People yeah. that just uh, uh, give their rifle to somebody else to zero in for them or they go to the range, they get it zeroed in, then they just put it up. Mm -hmm. I like to shoot a lot during the during the year, yeah. you know. Let's talk about – I'm glad you brought that up because that's, um, that's not the most common question we get, but I know we get questions related to practice and then a lot of people with that mindset of, you know, it's a gun, it's not a bow, get it zeroed in and then just go hunting, Yeah, you know. Yeah. You don't look at it that way. No, they, they're missing out on a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, you know, shooting uh, targets and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I love to shoot steel. I like to shoot things that react when, <laughs> when you hit it. You know, yeah. hearing that, you know, you see where the bullet hits on that steel, you see it wang and stuff right. like that. Yeah. It makes it, it just makes it more fun. Yeah. Especially for kids. I, when I'm teaching a kid how to shoot a gun, mm -hmm. um, you know, the worst thing in the world is just let them shoot paper targets. Right. They lose interest. That's, it's not any fun, but you let them shoot tin cans or bottles or, you know, uh, milk jugs full of water right stuff like that yeah it gets them really excited what do you uh what do you suggest to people because we do get this one a lot it's like hey we get a you know i can't re remember specific ones off the top of my head but we get a lot of hey i'm introducing my son or my daughter and they're you know young 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 kid yeah um never shot a gun before what do i do well you want to get them excited about it mm -hmm. uh, you know so many people don't start their children young enough uh, to into hunting, into shooting, whether it be with a bow or a gun. Here in Mississippi, we don't have that problem. Most kids, four or five years old, have already killed a, a buck. Sure. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, it's it's kind of part of our tradition here. But start them out uh, young, you know, with a twenty-two rifle or pellet gun. I started out, uh, you know, remember shooting at four years old with BB guns. Moved up to pellet rifles. Mm -hmm. Me and Will. I would always, I'd get a new pellet rifle, I'd pass mine down to Wilbur. Uh, then, of course, 22s and stuff like that. But, you know, kids nowadays, uh, they got all these video games. And yeah. a lot of those video games have guns in them. Right. And uh, I know my grandson, uh, for Christmas, a couple of Christmases ago, I bought him an AR-22 rifle. Yeah. And it was a collapsible stock, so it fit him good. Yeah. And uh, man, he he knew exactly. Oh, that's an AR. That's a that's an M16. Yeah. It got him excited. Had a big clip in it, hold thirty rounds of twenty two or whatever. Right, right, right. And uh, take him out, let him shoot cans and bottles, and find safe places. You know where you could shoot into water, so they can see where the bullet hits and things like that. Right. Yeah, they, they love it. And so you know, like an AR, uh, is something great to try a kid on. You want to get a uh, a young person a gun that fits them. Yeah. Worst thing in the world is if the stock doesn't fit them. And you know, I know like Savage has these Accu stocks now with the where you can change the the length of pull and stuff like that. So the you know the kids, a lot of them, you start them off at say ten or twelve or whatever, and they they grow like weeds. So you got a gun like that, you can change the, the length mm -hmm. of pull to fit them. Um, Makes you know the worst thing in the world is is you know when you're shooting targets you're on a bench rest or whatever, is having that scope come back and hit a kid. I, I always right. like to tell them to wear a hat to make sure that bill can clear the the back end of that scope so yeah. it doesn't hit them in the face. I remember when I was like, I had to have been like 12 years old. I was shooting a, a lever action 30 30, and I got way too close to that scope and that thing bopped me. Ooh. Oh yeah, it smarted. And, and, and you know, and I've known cases where that just turns the kid off. I could completely. See. Yeah, luckily yeah. I'd been, you know, I'd been shooting. I was just making yeah. a numb skull mistake, yeah. which I'm sure doesn't surprise well, you. No, I mean you're thick headed, so <laughs> it didn't hurt you too bad. <laughs> but um, you know, I get a lot asked a lot what calibers. That's yeah. That's bar none. That's the most common question or most high frequency question we get. Is this? We you know what? What's the best caliber to use for deer hunting? Yeah. Well, and uh, for for a young person, it varies. But um, I like to recommend a seven millimeter O eight. Mm -hmm. uh, shoots a hundred and forty grain bullet. Um, it doesn't have a whole lot of bad kick, um, and it's it's. And I hunt with a seven oh eight sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a good round to shoot. It's something. Like, uh, Abby, <laughs> calm down. Um, it's a it's a it's a gun that they could grow with, and uh, or you can pass it on to the next generation. But uh, yeah. 
I don't like 243s. No? Why is that? Uh, well, uh, they kick just as bad, and yeah. they shoot a smaller bullet. Right. And um, – and uh, I just never been a big fan of two forty threes. Two forty three to me is like a four ten shotgun. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a caliber. It's a gauge for more of an expert. Right. Uh, to to shoot because bullet placement becomes even more critical right. when you're shooting a smaller, yeah. smaller diameter, faster moving type bullet like that. Right. And I, I can see that too because the the last thing you want, especially if you take a, a kid or a new hunter and you get the last thing you want to do is for them to shoot a deer and not find it. Yeah, that's right. And going on that, you know, bullet placement for uh, you know the the old the old uh, rule was shoot uh, behind the shoulder for the heart. Right. And to me, that's the wrong place to shoot. Okay. Uh, I like to tell people shoot right in the middle of the shoulder, broadside. Got to be broadside. Never shoot if you're quartering to right. you or whatever. Right with a rifle but broadside shoot them right in the middle of the shoulder um it, it's got so much more room for error especially for a young person who gets nervous whatever mm -hmm. uh, you know because if you shoot too high you're still gonna hit you know break them down mm -hmm. hit too low you're gonna hit lung and heart left or right you know you got you're gonna get lung yeah. or, you know or, or, or the other side you're gonna get neck right much higher percent shot and usually when you shoot them right in the middle of the shoulder they drop right you know there's no tracking involved yeah and that's what you i mean that's i mean heck i've seen you made that shoot that shot just filming you I a shoot cotton mouth yeah, yeah i shoot everything elk deer whatever you may destroy a little meat but it's more important to put that animal down yeah not have them run off. You know, here in Mississippi, they can run into some thick stuff. They don't bleed right. Right. You never find them, so you're wasting a whole lot of meat. Yeah. And uh, a tag to boot. So, uh, yeah, that's just where I like to tell people to shoot, and you're not going to lose that much meat. So I could definitely, I mean, I can definitely see the argument there, you know, because, you know, like you said, that's such a high percentage shot. Yeah. That, you know, and the chances of you finding the deer, recovering the deer. Shooting low in the heart. So many things happen. You can shoot, hit them in the guts. You can shoot below them. You can shoot them in the brisket. Brisket. Yep. And the, yeah. That happens a lot. People mm -hmm. shooting them in a the brisket. That deer can take a step yeah. or whatever. Um, you know, so I, that, that's just my personal choice where yeah. to shoot a deer. That, and that's, I, I've seen this happen a lot, not just on, uh, you know, just knowing people and hearing stories. They just, you know, a lot of times someone gets introduced to deer hunting, they just get handed a gun. And then they see a deer, and then they just think, I shoot this thing anywhere, and I'll yeah. get it. You know, no yeah. one ever talks about, you know, it's, we focus so hard on shot placement with archery. You don't ever, you don't hear it nearly emphasized as much with guns. Right, and and start them off respecting the animal. Right. Say, so like, if you want to kill a deer, you got to do your work. You got to practice. You got to know where to shoot them. You got to get good with your rifle. And of course, safety goes right along with that. Yeah. And I, I hundred percent agree with that because I, I, I mean, I don't know how many times we pull up here from, you know, stand hanging or just coming into camp or whatever, and you're out there at the lane out there shooting your gun. Yeah. You know, that's the young people, and you know, I know we want to talk about more about it, but young people, that's our future of hunting. Right. That's our future hunters, and without them, uh, we're not going to have hunting uh, like it is now mm -hmm. as we grow older. Yeah. What what about, you know, like a circumstance, because this is one we get to, I always revert back to these questions because that's what obviously what people are wanting to hear. Um, what about, you know, a new hunter that's not a kid, say as an adult? Now, are you going to are you gonna suggest them to start out the same way or are you maybe going to take a different route? Um, it's, it's similar in some cases, you know, depending on how used they are to firearms, say right. if they've been in the service or something like that and they're used to shooting, uh, you got to, you know, Get them the right setup, the right rifle, scope, bullet, uh, and uh, that that sort of thing. But uh, safety, of course, is paramount. Right. You know, it's it, it's hard to teach. You know, you and I grew up hunting. Right. From an early age. Yeah. And we're taught safety. We're taught how to uh, be in the woods and and how to hunt. And uh, you know, so it's it's dip more difficult for an older person. Yeah. So the best thing to do. It's for them to have a good friend or mentor mm -hmm. to that they can go with, that can teach them these things, yep. and uh, hopefully get them up to speed yeah. where they need to be. Yeah, having a mentor definitely, definitely is the most ideal situation. But that's that's part of the reason why we do, um, st honestly, stuff like this podcast. That's why we did all those educational videos yeah. on our YouTube for you know, because not 
everyone has the luxury of having that. You would be surprised how many uh, people say they've gotten out of high school or gotten out of college and working a job, and they've never, you know their parents didn't hunt, they didn't have anybody in their family that hunted, mm -hmm. that would love to hunt, yep. that would really like to, but they don't know where to start. Right. And uh, you know, and that that's a that's a little bit of an issue, but there are yeah. plenty of people out there that would be glad to help them get started. It's just making those right contacts. Going to a bow shop is a, is a good place. Going to a, a good gun shop mm -hmm. and asking questions and stuff like that. And, right. And uh, so you know, that's that's what I recommend for those type of yeah. people. I mean, heck, my, I mean, and I've told this story on this podcast before. My mother last year killed yeah. her first deer. Yeah. She yeah. J just through, I mean, I, honestly, just through me doing this job and talk, you know, being around y'all, she just one day she just said, "Lake, I want to kill a deer. I want to do it. I want to see, see, see what it's all about." I said, yeah. "Let's go." And yeah. you know what we did? We just what we were talking about. We took a, it wasn't a twenty two. We took a seventeen, a Savage seventeen, uh -huh. and we went out there. And uh, I didn't have any metal targets. What I actually did, I took I took clay I took clay pigeons. Yeah. And put them out there and stacked them out. And she shot them. So when she hit them, they bust. Yeah. And she liked that. And then the uh, first time we took her out there, she shot a doe and loved yeah. it. Yeah. She's already been. Are we gonna go again this year? <laughs> <laughs> so absolutely. Good. Well, you got you got a sweet mama too. I do that. I got very very lucky in that standpoint. But I mean, like like I was. It goes back to what I was saying. Those kind of situations happen. She'd grown she'd grown up here. She just said in her family traditionally the the women really didn't hunt you know and so she but um a lot of women now are getting into hunting they are yeah they really are they are and i was i mean i was tickled to death she i mean she had a great time i had a great time it was it was special yeah for sure um what do you like okay so this is what we get a lot like if you're if i had to ask you you know which i know that this would never happen because you enjoy guns too much but if I had if I had to ask you, you're gonna have one whitetail gun for the rest of your life. But <laughs> hey, see, I know <laughs> you like variety. But if you had to, I know people would like hearing this. If you had to choose one bullet set up and everything, what what would you go with? Well, I guess uh, because you hunt all different kind of situations, you hunt uh, tree stands in kind of thicker woods. Mm -hmm. You hunt big open bean fields. Right. But if I had to choose one, I guess it would be my seven millimeter Magnum. I knew you were going to say bolt that. A bolt yeah. action seven mag yeah. with an adjustable scope that would adjust from like uh, two and a half or three up to whatever ten, twelve power, something mm -hmm. like that, to give me some. Uh, you know, if I'm hunting a big open place, to give me some extra uh, magnification. Right. right. Um, but I like hunting with all kind of guns. Yeah. So now I want since you said that, I want to ask you. So. How how's your setup gonna vary? If you say okay, we'll do both of them. We'll do like big open, long range, and then if you're gonna hunt in the woods, what are you gonna do for like a big open, big open spot? Big open spot. Uh, my my Savage uh, Model One Ten Storm. I like stainless steel guns. More weatherproof. I can hunt all kind of weather. Uh, bolt action, twenty two inch barrel, mm -hmm. uh, seven millimeter Magnum. Right. Shoot a hundred and forty grain Federal. Trophy bonded tip bullet. I love uh, that bullet. Yeah, Those you know, trophy bonded tips are it's awesome. A, it's a it's a big hollow point bullet with a plastic tip in it to give it better uh, ballistics. Right. But when you hit something that 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 uh, plastic tip goes away and you got that big open cavity there, hollow point mm. for expansion. And the neat thing about it, that copper jacketed is uh, electro whatever bonded to the lead core so it peels back but right. it doesn't doesn't bust apart yeah and um so it's it, that's a great bullet in whatever caliber you're shooting right um and uh, uh but if i'm hunting in a you know like a smaller food plot or i'm hunting in the woods mm -hmm. uh, i like a i like a shorter barrel rifle uh you know either in a 308 right. or um uh, uh, six point five seven millimeter oh yeah. eight, you know that that six point five Creedmoor has gotten a lot a lot of that's publicity yeah, lately. That's and been it, become a very popular whitetail gun. It, it has, but it there's a misconception with that bullet that it's a wonder bullet. Um, it's just like any other bullet. It it, it was really designed for long range shooting, mm -hmm. shooting thousand yard targets. And so when you're shooting a deer, very rarely do you shoot a deer at much over mm -hmm. 100 yards, say, or much less, say, 1,000 yards. So bullet placement is is, is essential with that 6.5. So many people think, just shoot the deer and he'll 
die right there because yeah. this is the 6.5 cream oil. That's not the, the magic ca- gun. Yeah. That's the magic gun, and and I like that caliber. It doesn't kick very hard. Right. You're shooting 120 to 140 grain bullets, say, plenty, plenty of power. Mm-hmm. Ballistics on it are not. That impressive, 2,700 feet per second at the muzzle. Right. But it's just got a, it's a long bullet, very aerodynamic, and it, it is a good whitetail bullet yeah. uh, uh, for, you know, doing what we do. But it's not a wonder bullet. Not like a wonder said. bullet. Uh, not not if you, unless you like shooting targets at 1,000 yards. Right. I remember it was uh, when Tom Fuller came down here. Yeah. The th- and he, he the 1,000-yard gun he had, which uh, just which he hunted with it, too. It was a 6.5. Yeah. Um, but, you know um, – it's, it's all about bullet placement. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm not a fan of 243, but if you put that bullet where it belongs with 243, it's killed a lot of deer. Mm-hmm. My daddy hunted with a 243. Yeah. But uh, uh, it's 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 just it's not what you hit them with, and neither is a seven mag. Some people think seven millimeter magnum, 300 wind mag. Gosh, you know, you hit them, boy, that just that'll yeah. kill them right just from the shock of that bullet. Right. Yeah. Doesn't happen that way. Right. Yeah. Doesn't it's happen. still you still got to you got to put the bullet where you want it. Mm-hmm. How uh, would your scope vary at all from set? You know, how, from scope power, would you change that up from open areas to woods? I guess not, because um, I've gotten where I like scopes. You know, a three to nine variable scope is probably the most popular scope in in the country. Mm-hmm. They sell more of that combination scope and whatever brand there is. And uh, but I like uh, the 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 low power is fine. But I like some high power too, if I'm in the right setup. You know, I got a rifle on a, a rest and everything. And you can turn that uh, magnification up mm-hmm. and really study a deer, study the horns and whatever. And yep. uh, you know, especially if they're out past 100 yards or 200 yards. So I like a scope with a lot of lot, some good low magnification, like two and a half to three, and then I like high end. I think most of the scopes I got now. Set up on a two and a half to sixteen power yep. uh, scope. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Bushnell's got this new forge out. It's great. They just very clear scope. Yeah, just what really I got good on in low light. Yeah, oh, it's it's awesome. It really is. Yeah. And it doesn't have that big objective. I think it's forty four millimeters, mm-hmm. not a big fifty. And it's a, you know it's a fairly compact scope. It's about the size of a three to nine in most most sizes. So. Yeah. Um, but a three and nine is fine. Uh, you know, you, you know, but my personal preference is something with a little bit higher magnification, yeah. which I really, but don't, and this is a mistake. A lot of people make, keep your rifle set on lower magnification. Usually when I'm hunting in the woods, it's set not at the very bottom, but like on four power because if that deer comes out close and you got it set up on 16 power. You're in trouble. I've got a funny story about that. I bet you do. It was when I was hunting. With my dad uh, at our family place up in North Mississippi, and I was I, I had killed a deer at that time, but I you know I was still I was young and green, and uh, I was you know I'd been in the stand and I was just you know kind of looking at stuff. I was just fooling with a scope. I kept turning the power, and I had the power turned way up. Yeah, and we had this doe walk out at about <laughs> I mean like bow range. Yeah. And Dad was like, shoot her. And I could not find her at the scope, yeah. and I couldn't figure out why, you know, because my little head, I was That's freaking right. out. I, that probably would have been the second or third well, you, deer I ever shot, know, and I'm looking, and I couldn't yeah. find her. You get excited. Yeah. You know, when things start to happen, that deer walks out, and I'm, you know, I'm on up there in age, but I still get excited. <laughs> so I have to watch myself. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, and another thing, uh, you need a rest. You need something to rest mm-hmm. your gun on. Of course, we make – trigger sticks we make all kind of shooting rest accessories right but don't ab girl um don't forget especially with children or hunting in a shooting blind even in a tree stand you know we carry uh, uh one of our trigger sticks got a special little thing on the bottom so you can step put your foot on mm-hmm. it and move it around where you can rest your rifle right. i don't care if you're only shooting 20 yards 30 yards you shoot better with a rest uh, on your gun absolutely yeah Absolutely. That's I mean that's those trigger sticks. I don't go without them. Yeah. Or I mean they and that's those are. Yeah. Sometimes you even see a a, a deer you want to shoot as you're walking to your stand, mm-hmm. and don't think there's always going to be a tree or a rock you can rest on. Right. I've been there and it don't happen. Sometimes it works out that way, but <coughs> I'd rather bet on having a trigger stick. Oh yeah. Or, yeah, or some sort of rest. Some sort of rest. Absolutely. Yeah, I definitely don't trust myself freehanding. Yeah. 
That's never. If you don't, if you don't want to buy one, cut a stick or something. Just yeah. but have that something you can uh, steady your rifle with. Yeah, hundred percent. I remember last year your your cousin. It was two years ago. Your cousin forgot his trigger stick. Wilbur? Yeah. Forgot something? Yeah. So he cut a stick on the way to the blind. He said he was making a homemade trigger stick. Uh-huh. And I think he, like, taped up. I mean, it had, he had a little wire yoke to rest it in and stuff. I'm but sure he did. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't have the adjustment capabilities. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. That boy, I tried to raise him right, but I don't know. You can only do so much. You're not a wizard, you know. No, I'm not. I can't do miracles. <laughs> well, I think. Uh yeah, we got to get down to Skin and Shed. We got some pictures to take and yeah. some cameras to check, and I think we covered, as far as I can remember back, uh, I think we covered everything mainly that I wanted to cover. So yeah, and and if people still have some questions, they're you know, we get a lot of uh, messages off of Facebook mm-hmm. and stuff like that to our office. Yeah. We do our best to answer them. Uh, you know, the uh, Mary Ashley that get, receives those things, she'll send them out to the crew and say, what yeah. do y'all, what can I tell this guy mm-hmm. if she doesn't have the answer right yeah. there? So If someone sends a question into Facebook or Instagram, it gets it gets tended to. Yeah. We have a, a 100% response rate. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, anyway, guys, um, I hope y'all enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. Mr. Jimmy, thank you for right. finally gracing the podcast You're with your welcome, presence. I, I'm, I'm just trying to help you right you know. <laughs> Uh, so that's all we have for today thank you all for listening definitely if you have any questions don't be afraid to send them in and as always thank you for listening to the speak the language podcast amen